And Secretary General Ban Ki-moon, to talk about the situation in Syria, we're joined on the phone by Neil Sammons, Amnesty International Syria researcher. He is in a Turkish border village, a quarter mile from the Syrian border. We're also joined from Damascus by Razan Zaytuna, a lawyer and human rights activist. She's been reporting on the recent protests for various online networks. And we're going to Ottawa, Canada, to Maharar, former victim victim of U.S. extraordinary rendition, now a human rights activist. He was seized at New York's Kennedy Airport in September of 2002 and sent to Syria, where he was tortured. But we're going to start in Damascus right now. Uh, welcome to Democracy Now! Talk about the situation there. Now, in, in, there is continuing daily protests around the country. Every night, every actually during the week, most of the protests happen at the night. Every night, dozens of thousands of people protesting in Damascus, in the suburb of Damascus, in Homs, Hama, in, 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 the, in the whole country, especially in this time when there is a Syrian city under siege, under uh, army and security forces in Jusr al shuhur The situation de there is disastrous, actually, even though the uh, regime declared that the military process there is end, but the uh, uh, security uh, there is still raided houses, killing people. Uh, only yesterday, 10 people got killed in Ariha near Jusr al shuhur They uh, a massive wave of arrest among people who, who didn't leave their houses. Thousands of people continuing to fled their houses, not only to Turkey, to that abort, Turkish border, only to uh, Syrian villages uh, far away from Jisr al shuhur What about the level of protest, Razan Saituna, in the streets? Um, how afraid are people in Damascus right now, where you are? Uh, Maybe in Damascus, as you know, it's the, the level of it is less than in other places. There is continuing daily protests in Damascus in different uh, areas. In center of Damascus, uh, Al Midan, in Al Qadam, in in uh, the oldest uh, neighbors in Damascus, it's still not in the same level of another cities like Homs or Hama or uh, or uh, uh, Daraa, for example. But it's continuing, and this is daily. What about these reports of the helicopter gunship attacks, Rasan? It's for sure. We got videos. We got uh, photos of uh, of those helicopters shot people in Jusr al-Shughur. It was a real real war against Jusl al-Shughur and its neighbors during the last few days. You can't imagine that hundreds uh, of troops, tanks and helicopters went to just uh, make uh, this, uh, this process against a small uh, city like Jusr al-Shughur. It was really like a war situation. And the reports of the killing of children. Um, Amnesty, I think, has more than 80 names of children who have been killed, children and teenagers. Uh, videos are emerging one by one, gruesome videos, Rosam. Actually, yes. Most of the children who got killed, according to uh, our reports, were killed in their houses by snipers, when they, on, uh, by, on windows, on balcons. Some of them, who are between 14 and 15, got kidnapped and arrested in the streets, like what happened when, with Hamza al-Khatib and Tamir. They were participating in, in the protest, which was going to break the siege on Dara'a, when they got kidnapped by the security. And after uh, days, they were delivered to their families as dead bodies, tortured awfully. Uh, it's... it's, uh, it's uh, Confirm that the security didn't separate, didn't make any difference in dealing with Syrian people. It, it doesn't matter if the person is 80 or he is 10 years old. Everybody will be treated equally in torturing, in, in killing. And this is what the, what the uh, what, what statics shows, actually. Razan, there was a report of a protest outside the Turkish embassy in Damascus. Now, in many cases, people are gunned down when they protest in the streets. 
here, as they were trying to take down the flag of the Turkish embassy and put up the Syrian flag, Turkey's accepting thousands of refugees into Turkey now. Uh, there was no attack like that. Who were these people protesting? Uh, it's not only in, in, uh, in front of the Turkish embassy. It's there is the, this, the security and Shabiha. Daily, they make a protest to show support to the regime, to show uh, uh, opposed to uh, Al Jazeera TV channel. They protesting daily in front of its uh, office in Damascus, and yesterday in front of the uh, Turkish embassy. If anybody, we have daily protests. All our protests, which which demand for our freedom, is uh, faced with security. Many got arrested, many got killed. But for sure, those who are protesting, for who are they are pro the regime. They are from the regime. They are security and shabiha. They can do everything freely without uh, anybody telling them anything. So let us go to the border right now. We're also joined by Neil Sammons, who is the Syria researcher for Amnesty International in a Turkish border village about a quarter mile from the Syrian border uh, from Gubeci. Can you tell us exactly what's happening there? Welcome, Neil. Yes, hi. Thank you very much. Yes, well, um, the, it's, a, it's a small border village, Gubeci, and as far as I'm aware, the Syrians aren't actually living there, but. Um, Tens of them are coming across every day, and they are now collecting uh, bread and um, Pepsi bottles and so on, and they're then sneaking back across the border, and they're taking them to their families and, and neighbors who are displaced on the other side. On the other side, we can see um, tens of tents, um, and on the other side of the hill, apparently, there's up to 10,000 people who are basically living under trees, and they've spent the night in, in the woods and, and under rain, actually. It was, you know, it's, it's quite high altitude, and it was, a, it was a cold, wet night. Tell us what people are describing who are coming across the border from Syria, Neil. Well, it's, uh, it's really a very chilling picture from uh, everyone I've spoken to today, and I've spoken to, I don't know, up to 50 Syrians. Um, they come from different villages around Jusar al most of them, um, and from Jusar al itself. They say that no one is left in the city, um, and only in one or two villages, uh, perhaps some elderly people left. The army, they say, and the security forces backed up by a paramilitary organization, the Shabiha, the ghosts, have gone into those villages, um, usually with tanks first. They've shelled the houses, um, and then the army has gone in, and they've killed many people. It's difficult to say figures. Some say tens, some say hundreds, some say thousands. Um, that may be too high. It's, it's impossible to verify. Um, and not only that, but they've, they've gone on with something like a kind of uh, scorched earth policy because they say that uh, livestock has been slaughtered, the crops have been burnt, seed has been burnt, water uh, supply has been uh, contaminated. Um, and basically, the population of northwestern Syria, close to the Turkish border, has just been driven up to uh, within a few kilometers of uh, the border here um, with, with Turkey. You've also been in the hospitals there, Neil Sammons? Yes, I was in the state hospital to, uh, yesterday, and I'll probably go back later today. Um, there I spoke with about half a dozen Syrians. Um, three of their cases, I, 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 well, I spent a lot of time on. What, uh, they were quite mixed. One was a agriculture worker. He was 40 years old, illiterate. He said he was working his land near a demonstration one day, and he got shot in the leg. Um, and then taken off by the army to security center where he was very badly beaten. And after about five days when he thumb printed um, some papers which he couldn't read, uh, he was allowed to go. Um, and then he managed to get up here um, to hospital for, for treatment. Another person was a first aid worker. He worked for the Syrian Red Crescent. He said he was treating wounded people, or trying to treat wounded people at least, um, during killings in the city of Jisr al-Shahur 
on the Saturday and Sunday, um, and then he was shot in the back. Um, and then he was uh, was taken up to treatment. Another person, uh, a construction worker, he, he he was shot in the leg. He says he was a demonstrator. He was amongst, uh, he says, about 15,000, 20,000 people who were marching towards um, military lines when they were opened fire upon. His, the top of his leg has been shattered. Um, and, uh, and then, yeah, he was ferried up here, where it seems that this... The Turkish government has generally done a pretty good job of receiving people, but until now, it's a little bit of a mystery about why they haven't actually allowed uh, journalists and others access into the into the camps, although it appears that their treatment has been very good. I mean, this is very significant. Um, you know, many Libyans have also fled to Turkey, and they've certainly allowed access to the media. On the one hand, they're allowing thousands of Syrians to come in. But not allowing them access to journalists means that it protects the Syrian government. Yet you're there. You're a human rights researcher. How are you traveling around there on the border? Well, in, in the border area, you know, it, it, it's fine to, to, to move around, and um, there's not any clear Turkish uh, security presence trying to stop anyone doing anything, except for around uh, the camps. So um, if you get to within 50 meters or so of these uh, camps, which have actually now got uh, like blue tarpaulin around them, so that uh, whereas uh, uh, nearly a week ago, people say that you could go up and talk to them through the fence. Um, now the government has actually closed up those little holes so people aren't able to uh, to talk to people in there. Um, another journalist was saying that uh, she had been able to throw stones or kind of rocks with uh, little messages attached to them, and people were then able to kind of read them and, and send them back. There's a little bit of communication like that, but, but even that is, is very difficult to, to happen at the moment. People thought perhaps after the elections yesterday here, uh, with AKP winning again, or um, perhaps uh, for other reasons, that it, it was unsure what the government would actually decide to do um, to do with access to, to the camps. Um, people are hopeful. We're still trying to, to get in. We would have thought as Amnesty International that we might have a, a slightly more uh, benign influence if we were allowed to be in. Neil but Sammons, would you say that there would be um, more international response if access was allowed to hear these stories of what you call a scorched, a scorched earth policy on the part of the Syrian government and military? Very possibly. Um, that's what it is. I mean, people who came here um, you know, a week or, or so ago probably saw the worst events in Jasad al-Shahur. Um, and that is not being adequately documented by anyone. That, you know, journalists and others aren't allowed into Syria, obviously. Um, at the same time, we have uh, the Security Council deliberating very, very slowly yet again whether it can even condemn the killings. Uh, and it's, it's pretty disgusting. They won't go as far as condemning, let alone referring the situation in the country to the prosecutor of the International Criminal Court, which appears to be the, the only way that there would ever be an end to the killings there and to the, the impunity which the Syrian government and security forces has enjoyed, sadly, for, for decades. Finally, Neil, the killing of children. Um, Amnesty has documented how many children killed. It sounds like far more than is previously believed. Yes, um, you know, thanks to our kind of trusted uh, human rights activists in the, in the country. Um, I mean, we have 82 names. That's, uh, until that was three days ago, it was 82. Um, you know, 16 and below. And amongst those, we have even five who appear to have been tortured to death. Um, most shocking cases, and I've uh, you know had the mixed pleasure and honour of you know looking at a number of uh, the videos of of these people's bodies after they've been returned to their families, and you know with like the heads beaten to pulps and broken bones and bullet wounds, skin scraped uh, across perhaps from uh, you know acid or something. It's difficult to say electrolysis. 
um, you know, and this, this is the children. I mean, how how, how far does a does a, a regime go to to try to terrify its people into stopping to push for change? It's 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 astonishing, but really quite inspiring as well. Of course, that the Syrian people are continuing to to go onto the streets and to demand their their legitimate rights, even though they know they may get a a bullet in their head.